Hey guys, it's Lewis on the Gaming Rift here, and today I'm going to be bringing you my video on MCU Hella versus MCU Gore the God Butcher. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and without further ado, let's get right into it. Hella is Odin's firstborn, and the Asgardian goddess of death, and the primary antagonist of Thor Ragnarok. Despite only having one on-screen appearance, her scaling is impressive nonetheless, and she really did impress viewers with just how formidable and captivating a villain she actually is. Firstly, when she isn't even on Asgard, or in a state essentially less than her base, Hela was still capable of shattering Mjolnir ultra-casually in the palm of her hand. And this is impressive because Mjolnir has a durability feat of essentially withstanding a star exploding, or essentially withstanding a star going supernova, making it star level at the very least. In terms of scaling, Hela, however, isn't lacking, as she was stated to be too much for Odin to handle, as she could he couldn't actually stop Hela, like, millions of years ago. So oh, he had to imprison her instead. And this is impressive because Odin has decimated entire worlds before, and has a couple of solar system feet in For the Dark World. Not to mention, he also dueled and beat Surtur millions of years ago. So this is insanely impressive scaling for Hela. You also have Hela being superior to Thor, and Thor was blatantly stated by Odin to be superior to Odin in raw power. And this is extremely impressive and ties over to her durability, as a massive lightning strike from Thor, who keep in mind was stated to be above Odin, merely knocked her out, and didn't do much damage beyond that. Going back to her feat of shattering Mjolnir, Hela was completely unfazed from the hammer, essentially striking her entire body. Which is impressive because Thor with Mjolnir has literally shaken entire planets before, as well as split Jotunheim in half. Not to mention generated a, a crater 100 times the size of the Grand Canyon within Jotunheim. And this is impressive because the ice of Jotunheim has, was stated to be superior to that of Asgardian steel. So that means that a planet made of a material more durable and dense than that of Asgardian steel is inferior to that of Hela in terms of durability, which is very impressive to think about. Despite all of this, however, this seems to only be a fraction of Hela's true power, as it's stated on several occasions that Hela's power is near limitless, by MCU tie-in material as well as by Thor himself during the film. It's also stated by Odin before he passes. Not to mention Heimdall states that he warns Thor that Hela will consume the Nine Realms and all of the cosmos, implying that Hela is indeed a universal threat if left unchecked. And this isn't even talking about Hela's insane regeneration factor, which allowed her to essentially be stabbed completely through the body and didn't even feel the attack, she just went on to kill the Asgardian soldier who attacked her. Not to mention she's resisted being stabbed by Gungnir, the Spear of Odin, and it didn't seem to slow her down in the slightest. Essentially, she made a very good first impression, Hela is indeed one of the most powerful villains in the MCU. However, in the other corner we have Gore the God Butcher, essentially the goat himself portrayed by Christian Bale. And this guy also didn't disappoint with his current one MCU appearance, portraying himself to be less iconic than Hela, but nevertheless just as powerful. Going over raw strength for a moment, Gore was able to overpower Thor and put him in a position that nearly killed him, as he was going to imply him with the Necro Sword. And this is a very similar situation that Thor found himself in by the hands of Thanos during an endgame. However, that version of Thor was weakened, implying that Gore is superior to Thanos in terms of strength. And for context as to, as to how powerful Thanos is, he was described on two separate occasions to be the most powerful force of nature in the universe, and the most powerful villain that any of the heroes had gone up against. Which is extremely impressive to think about that Gore could indeed be stronger than Thanos. During the Moonstroke Shadow Realm battle, Gore was capable of spinning a sun in order to create shadows. And this feat was calculated to be faster than light plus, which is insanely impressive speed-wise, but more importantly star level, which would put him easily on the same tier as characters like Hela and Thanos. And this isn't that far-fetched either, as it's been stated that Gore was the superior villain, essentially trumping Hela in all stats by the director, which, keep in mind, the director of Love and Thunder and Ragnarok remains the same, and it was stated also that Gore would push Thor to his physical and mental limits in Love and Thunder. Gore's most impressive feat by far is comes from the form of his Necro Swords, which really take his scaling to another level, as it was stated by Zeus that Gore with the Necro Swords would essentially be able to kill everyone in Omnipotent City, including himself. Couple of them. One, yes. I am scared. Gore has the necro sword, which means 
You could kill us. Not good. What's omnipotency? It's the home of the most powerful gods in the universe. And this is all the more impressive when we learn that you know, Thor states that Omnipotent City houses the most powerful gods in the universe. And we even see a couple of Celestials present as well. And this would mean that, you know, the Necro Sword or Gorse weapon would be capable of killing even Celestials, which are capable of spawning galaxies virtually, you know, casually as seen in Eternals. In terms of durability, Gore is capable of no dipping attacks from Stormbreaker and Thor, and these are same attacks were capable of fatally wounding and even decapitating Thanos. He was also capable of taking Zeus's lightning bolt without much issue, demonstrating his durability as well as healing factor, as well as being able to take a prolonged blast of lightning from Stormbreaker and Thor, and this same lightning could ragdoll Thanos and severely damage Hela. Not to mention he was capable of taking on both Mighty Thor and Regular Thor at the same time, and doing remarkably well against the two of them, taking p punishing blows from both of these heroes. So with that being said, who, are, who do I see wins this battle? Well, essentially, in terms of AP and durability, these guys are very similar. They've taken attacks from Thor, Valkyrie, those type of, type of characters, and held up remarkably well under the circumstances. However, due to, you know, the characters getting stronger over time, as well as director statements, I would have to lean towards Gore when it comes to AP and durability. He was stated to be basically a step up from Hela in all regards, and he's taken attacks from, you know, stronger versions of Thor. As you gotta keep in mind, Stormbreaker was stated to be the most powerful weapon in Asgard's vault, which would scale, you know, their weapon above anything that Hela is capable of generating. And he took those attacks remarkably well without much issue. In terms of speed, they are very, very similar, as both of them have reacted to Mjolnir, Thor, you know, Valkyrie, these tiers of characters. You could argue that one is superior to the other, and honestly, I'd be completely okay with it. However, once again, I would have to say that it's either a tie, or in Gore's favour. As you gotta keep in mind, he reacted to feats that are a bit more consistent, you know, reacting to Mjolnir a few more times than Hela did, being stated once again to be a step up from Hela in pretty much all regards, which would include speed. Not to mention, he has a plethora more feats as a result of Love and Thunder. As you gotta keep in mind that, you know, My Mighty Thor was capable of traveling around the world, circumventing the world in fact twice, which was calculated to be massively faster than light. You also have Jane traveling to the center of the universe, which is another insane speed feat. And you gotta keep in mind that he's fighting a stronger version of Thor, who would logically scale above the four that Hela fought, which is extremely impressive. And you gotta keep in mind that even that version of Thor in Ragnarok was comparable to Hela. Not on the same tier in terms of speed, obviously she was faster and stronger, but he wasn't miles behind and he did have a chance of beating her, which is why I would lean towards Gore in this respect. In the end, I see that Gore is being I see Gore as being far too much for Hela to handle. I mean, yeah, she does have immortality, and as long as Asgard stands in this hypothetical battle, she would be immortal and Gore wouldn't be able to fully kill her. However, characters weaker than him were capable of incapacitating him, Hela, you know, fighting against her and having a chance at victory. And when you factor in that Gore is superior to Hela in basically all stats, as well as taking hits from Stormbreaker, which is superior to any weapon Hela is capable of generating, I realistically see Gore winning this fight. In my opinion, Gore the God Butcher wins. With that being said though guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you disagree or if you have any different opinions on the matchup, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. If you have any more uh, you know, versus battle ideas you want me to work on, that's absolutely fine. Or if you have any videos you want me to react to, that's also fine. Just comment your ideas down below. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you all in the next one. This is Lewis of The Gaming Rift, signing out for now.